right good morning friends rather good afternoon so in the last few classes we tried our level best to choose the important topics keeping the examination with you but because of extension of you know the same thing and they have authorized us to cover even the chapters that were that were left unattended so that's why um in today's class and also in the coming next four classes we will try to complete the entire uh, you know course material that is elective material that has been assigned for you and uh, keeping that in view uh, today we will discuss about uh, the spices of course in my lecture on spices i discuss about uh, uh, you know uh, mirchi that is chilies we discussed about uh, the method of cultivation of the chilli and how the harvest is being made and how drying is made and what were the you know pests generally attack uh, the chillies etc and uh, red chilli uh, you know green chilli etc etc we discussed it and uh, because of the lack of you know allotted time we you know skipped rather covering turmeric ginger and uh, you know coriander or dhania so we will we'll try to learn about uh, the turmeric ginger and uh, dhania that is coriander today now coming to turmeric you know turmeric uh, is an essential item nowadays it is essential not only in uh, you know cooking but also in cosmetics it is equally important in cooking that is culinary preparations and also in cosmetic preparations you know uh, india there is a big history of this turmeric you know from vedic times from vedic times it it is associated with uh, uh, indian culture or hindu culture you know for every auspicious occasion uh, this turmeric is included in all uh, types of uh, you know puja and other uh, um, you know occasions now uh, turmeric as you know there is curcuma langa and uh, a member of gingivereci this curcumin is the important alkaloid that is present in curcuma and of course you know nowadays um, the west especially Uh, us us tried to take uh, you know patent on turmeric even uh, they have uh, applied even for neem also uh, so because of uh, the inactivity of uh, the government of india and uh, the scientific community um, we could uh, of course at least late we we tried our level best to counter their claims claiming that this is being used in india from vedic times now this coming to this turmeric you know unlike uh, other crops this is a crop that generally we grow uh, through vegetative reproduction vegetative means here you don't have any seed as such the vegetative part are uh, you know what we call the fingerlings of the corn a rhizome to be more particular rhizome is like were uh, you know an expanded thing it has you know mother rhizome and uh, the extra expanded uh, fingerlings are there they are the daughter parts and uh, each has you know though it is inside the ground now you might have learned you were uh, in your uh, you know intermediate and also in uh, ssc regarding its uh, you know morphology you know generally the things that are found inside the soil generally we assume that it is a root but you know it, the it is not a root it actually it is a stem modification it is a stem modification because you find what we call nodes internodes buds and uh, scaly leaves because it is inside the soil there is no scope for 
sunlight to pass on to it so that's why they they got reduced into scaly structures and because of the presence of nodes internodes scaly leaves and birds this rhizome we consider as the modification of stem not a root now this is about its morphology of course coming to uh, the areas of production now uh, india we can say it ranks first as far as uh, the turmeric production is concerned we are the number one country in the world in time in terms of you know acreage and also in terms of yield because our climate is quite suitable for raising or growing this turmeric now you know turmeric uh, mostly grown of course mostly it is popular in south india and uh, you know 50% of indian production is confined to our united andhra pradesh now both in uh, you know andhra and the telangana districts this is a popular crop you know um, coming to andhra you know generally it is guntur prakasham nellur even some parts of godavari districts krishna district where the turmeric is even in rail sima especially in kadapa and some parts of anandpur and chitur karnool there also you will see in large tracts of uh, uh, you know uh, agriculture areas where turmeric is grown as an important crop you now coming to telangana area now uh, nizamabad nizamabad uh, district is a uh, well known for uh, this uh, turmeric now you might have seen you know farmers hesitation regarding uh, uh, the board haldi board or turmeric board they are demanding for uh, this turmeric board so that they will get a uh, uh, remunerative price now uh, apart from nizamabad even karimnagar srikakulam and visakhapatnam are some of the uh, districts where the turmeric cultivation is taken up on a large scale now coming to the climatic requirements as you know i already told you it, it requires you know it uh, thrives well or grows well comes up well in tropical areas tropical areas with humid climate is quite congenial for raising this crop and of course this is a shade loving crop even it comes up even under orchards you now this can be grown in even in mango plantations or even in what we call coconut plantations also because it is a shade loving crop and uh, you know coming to the soil preparation of course soil generally red loam soils or clay soils are quite suitable for uh, the cultivation of uh, this turmeric of course there are good number of varieties are there you know based on uh, the duration a variety requires of course uh, some are long duration varieties some are medium duration varieties some are very short duration varieties long duration varieties you know they require more than 9 months for uh, the maturity now generally uh, say uh, for example maidukuru dugirala armur armur in uh, nizamabad district of course dugirala variety popular in guntur and krishna districts and maidukuru you know uh, it is very popular in kadapa district there uh, this long duration variety is taken up and a short duration or medium duration variety you know they they come up for a harvest in 8 months where a short duration varieties require what we call around 7 months for its maturity uh, a good uh, short duration variety is kasturi kasturi which is popular in godavari districts here the finger rhizomes are very long and uh, with uh, they emit uh, characteristic uh, um, you know pleasing aroma they are uh, uh, very please they ex they emit a pleasing aroma for that they are very very popular so some long duration require 9 months whereas medium duration requires 8 months and the short duration requires 7 months now coming to the season 
season, you know, this is a, a Kharif crop. This is a Kharif crop and you get only one crop in a year. Now, generally, uh, it, uh, you know, as you know, as I already told you, uh, it requires more than or uh, its um, um, duration of the crop will be from seven to nine or nine and a half months or so. So generally, a plantation is taken up or uh, planting commences um, soon after uh, the monsoon showers, especially it is taken up in the month of June. And generally it comes for harvest. Generally harvest uh, is taken up uh, from, uh, um, you know, generally from February to March and April or so, depending on uh, the soil. If it is a very heavy soil, you know, if it is a black cotton heavy soil, generally it takes more time. If it is a red soil, a loamy soils, you know, they, because their water retaining or humid retaining capacity is very less. So that's why uh, maturity, maturity comes a bit earlier. Now coming to the, uh, you know, method of plantation. Now generally, as you know, uh, farmer, you know, after harvesting, he keeps, he keeps the seed for the next crop and he cleans that, he removes the soil, etc. And uh, in a heap, either in the shade of a tree or in his uh, house at a given corner, he, he makes a heap of it and uh, over it, you know, he, you know, displays the dry leaves, etc and uh, uh, soil and a dung mixture and uh, a thin layer is uh, formed over that and a small uh, opening is kept so that uh, uh, exchange of uh, air takes place. Now from this, from his, uh, uh, whatever the heap he has maintained, you know, uh, whenever there are uh, showers, you know, he removes all the coverings, etc. and he takes up them and uh, generally, you know, generally fingerlings are generally used as seed material. Generally, the seed material is put behind, uh, um, you know, behind the plow. Behind the plow, uh, a bullock uh, drawn plow will be there and generally ladies or uh, uh, children will be employed and they will be dibbling uh, the fingers uh, in the furrows of the plow. And uh, of course, then after that, you know, by using uh, a blade harrow, it they, that um, rhizomes will be covered. And uh, in uh, generally, you know, it takes uh, um, sprouting takes, you know, uh, uh, for 15 to 20 days or so. You will see um, new seedlings, young seedlings coming from the soil only after 20 days of plantation or so. Now, generally, because it is a, um, it, it shows good response for fertilizers. So that's why before uh, uh, plantation, you know, generally the soil is prepared by doing two or three, you know, plowings, then by using a blade harrow and uh, generally form add manure will be added, maybe uh, um, more than, uh, you know, 150 tons or so form add manure will be added and by using uh, plowing and blade harrows, etc. It will be thoroughly mixed into the soil. Then, of course, the plantation will be taken. And in some cases, you know, because um, rhizomes are treated, seed treatment will be there, and then uh, that will be used for plantation. So that uh, the rot generally it suffers from rot, and also tephrina, you know, it forms, uh, you know, leaf spots caused by tephrina maculans and uh, this uh, rhizomes, rhizome rot will be there and that will be caused by pests and uh, to check them, you know, seed treatment is given. And uh, um, um, generally, apart from that, you know, uh, there is the symptoms like, you know, uh, maggots, I already told you, generally rhizome fly will be there and thrips will be there and uh, uh, leaf, Leaf blotch will be there, leaf spot, etc. will be there, rhizome rot will be done by PTM species. And uh, these are some of the, you know, diseases and pests that generally we uh, uh, see on uh, the turmeric crop. Now, uh, as I already told you, generally 
the it because uh, it's um, it it requires seven to nine months you know for harvest generally we give at an interval of uh, seven to ten days generally depending on uh, the quality or the heaviness of the soil you give um, more than 20 or 30 irrigations are needed based on the nature of the soil and uh, when it comes you know when harvesting harvesting you know uh, in um, early maturing a you know crop varieties they come for harvest seven months eight months and nine months so in all the cases you know um, uh, the foliage or the leaves the leaves you know which are green in color they start turning into yellow and uh, straw color then uh, in 15 days or so the entire leaf foliage you know gets dried up then uh, when it completely dries up you know then um, in some cases you know uh, that trash will be removed or uh, burnt and then uh, farmer takes up what we call uh, the digging of the rhizomes from the soil generally uh, the harvest will be done uh, mainly by what we call by using the plows. Plow will be there and the peacocks, etc., will be used. And uh, uh, by that, you know, uh, whatever uh, the rhizome finger, rhizome, um, you know, round or rhizome, mother rhizome will be there and the fingerlings will be there, finger rhizomes are there, they come up. And generally, a labor will be employed, they'll, they'll collect the rhizomes that are brought from below onto the surface and uh, that will be taken and it will be kept in under shade of a big tree and uh, when harvest is completed then uh, people will be employed the labor will be employed and they will separate the mother uh, you know rhizome that generally which is round or more or less conical in shape uh, from the fingers that is from the daughter uh, rhizomes. Generally, the mother rhizome and daughter rhizomes will be separated. And, you know, uh, generally, after harvest, what do they do is prim primarily um, they leave the, you know, um, uh, what we call uh, roots. Roots will be there and even you will see soil, etc. So, uh, labor will be employed. Uh, to clean, to clean the rhizomes and then uh, these cleaned rhizomes will be subjected to what we call uh, curing. Curing. Now curing is, what is, what is curing? Curing is a process, you know, the fresh rhizomes that are dug from the soil, they will be cured. Here the curing process involves, you know, uh, you know, boiling, boiling uh, these rhizomes uh, in water. So big pans, maybe um, maybe pot-like ones or flat ones are used and uh, water will be poured in and these rhizomes will be kept in. And uh, generally, you know, if it's a pot-like, you know, generally, uh, um, you know, that will be covered by using a basket, et cetera. Et cetera. And uh, um, for one hour or for uh, one and a half hours or so, it will be heated under fire, maybe using your wood or, uh, you know, stubs of uh, your cotton or uh, uh, what we call red gram, etc. They can be used as, uh, you know, firewood. And uh, one and a half hour to two hours, in one and a half hour to two hours, you know, the boil, the water gets boiled and you will see, you know, you will see white fumes coming. And generally to test. Whether, it, whether these rhizomes are cooked or not, one rhizome will be taken and uh, uh, by taking a, a small, uh, you know, what we call broom stick or so, and uh, um, the formal test, whether it's cooked or not, by piercing into this rhizome. If the, um, uh, if the broom stick pierces, you know, then he comes to the conclusion that is cooked, well cooked, then he stops. And uh, then he removes this big part, iron part, from uh, the fire. Then he pours it on the ground. And of course, that will be 
kept under sunshine for 15 days or so, 15 to 20 days, then these rhizomes get, uh, you know, dried. They become hard and brittle. Then this material will be uh, subject to what we call, uh, you know, polishing. Polishing uh, will be done. Uh, so in some cases, you know, uh, these hard uh, rhizomes, either by using, you know, labor or by putting uh, them under sand or so, or by rubbing against uh, the rough ground, etc. Whatever the dried, uh, um, you know, scaly leaves, etc. are there, they are, they are removed. Then in some cases, they go for what is, what is known as coloring. To get a good price, generally, some colors or artificial colors are used. And in some cases, the turmeric powder itself will be sprinkled, either in the form of water or even dry powder will be put on that. So here, uh, the what we call polishing, uh, as I already told you, done uh, by rubbing against a hard surface, or there are you know uh, rolling drums are polishing drums are there into that uh, it is put, and uh, either by manual it is rolled, or uh, nowadays you know um, current rolling machines are there, uh, and uh, they remove all the waste material or dry material etc and the final you know your uh, turmeric combs come out and uh, if you want you know uh, to get good prices even to that also in some cases either artificial coloring will be there or uh, the um, you know turmeric uh, powder itself water will be sprinkled over that uh, so that uh, it gets uh, attractive color and uh, farmer gets good price for his produce. Now, this is about uh, what we call coloring, of course. And then, of course, I, as I already told you, the farmer leaves, you know, and separates the uh, material before separate, before uh, cleaning, you know, he puts, he separates some material for the next crop, which he uses as seed material for the next crop. So, this is uh, about uh, the turmeric. As you know, Coming to the importance, I need not tell. So nowadays, you know, it is uh, normal preparation generally. Now, you know, in post-COVID uh, uh, times, you might have seen, you know, people started uh, taking the fumes of, you know, they put, uh, uh, you know, some turmeric powder into the um, boiling water and uh, they take uh, these fumes because it has what we call antibiotic properties. The curcumin has antibiotic properties. Now it is a customary practice, you might have seen, generally, um, you know, ladies, they apply the turmeric paste to their feet. Generally, people, because they are busy in kitchen, you know, generally, um, there is every possibility for the fungal attack. So, to prevent the fungal attack, etc., uh, they take, they put uh, uh, this uh, turmeric paste to their feet. Even uh, in all occasions, in all auspicious occasions, maybe marriage, in all occasions, generally, you will see, even uh, while in, uh, giving, extending an invitation also, uh, they do that and uh, that will be applied even to the threshold, what we call gadapa, etc. Even for the doors, etc. It is being because of its antibacterial, antibiotic properties. Now, you know, you know, turmeric. Now we have what we call santur and uh, turmeric, uh, uh, you know, face creams are there because of antibacterial property they are being used. Now, this is about uh, uh, the turmeric. So generally, in exam, they will ask, you know, uh, the curing process. They may ask you about curing, and they may ask you about uh, polishing and uh, economic importance of, uh, um, you know, uh, this turmeric. Or sometimes uh, its uh, scientific name can be asked under uh, what we call uh, very objective mode. Then we move to what we call ginger. So ginger is nothing but this is also very, very important, you know, nowadays we, uh, this ginger tea, it is very familiar and uh, dried ginger, you know, you know, dried ginger is what we call shunti. So uh, this ginger is used both uh, as a fresh and also in dried form. Now this ginger, you know, it is, it, it shares uh, many features with that of uh, uh, turmeric. And uh, generally, uh, it is also 
uh, its requirements are very similar to that of uh, turmeric it also needs what we call uh, you know soils having uh, um, water holding capacity generally um, your uh, clay soils your red soils etc are very uh, good for raising this um, ginger now ginger gingiber officinalis is gingiberaceae gingiber officinal is the scientific name and gingiberaceae is the family of course india china west indies and even jamaica and the north western africa are some of the areas across the world where uh, the ginger is being uh, cultivated now in india uh, especially kerala gujarat bihar even andhra pradesh uh, are very famous for uh, this and vaisa godavari nello districts of andhra where this uh, ginger cultivation is taken up on a large scale and uh, coming to uh, telangana generally uh, the medak district especially the zahirabad and uh, kohir these are the areas where uh, you know you might have heard you know kohir allam the street vendors will sell in the name of what we call kohir allam which is kohir is very famous uh, because the soils are uh, red soils red clay soils are a very uh, good for raising this uh, ginger now climatic requirements of course very similar to that of uh, um, our uh, turmeric it, it too needs a tropical uh, um, climate uh, with a humid uh, warm humid weather and uh, it is also similar to that uh, shade tolerant so that's why it can be taken up as an intercrop in uh, coconut garden citrus orchards and also in uh, banana fields even even in what we call mango orchards now like uh, uh, turmeric it is also a, a, a kharif crop generally uh, plantation will be taken up in the month of uh, june so uh, now uh, very similar to that uh, for turmeric you know it, it too needs it to responds well for uh, fertilizer and generally uh, we use uh, farm yard manure and uh, generally the requirements vary and uh, generally you know uh, its requirement uh, will be 50 tons per uh, farm yard manure uh, generally 50 tons per hectare is uh, uh, ideal and generally after putting uh, this uh, format manure generally former takes up what we call uh, plowings two three plowings and then by using his blade harrow he makes uh, he makes his soil to fine tilth the soil with fine tilth is uh, required for the uh, for the better uh, yield uh, of this ginger now generally uh, to four to six uh, times uh, plowing is taken up of course now coming to the seed you know generally uh, about uh, 1000 kg of uh, rhizomes are needed uh, uh, per uh, one hectare now generally pieces you know similar to that you know fingerlings of uh, you know 10 to 25 grams of uh, having a uh, you know bud either uh, you know side bud or a typical bud that each piece should have at least one or two buds that can be used as a seed material and similar to that you know here also um, it is being planted behind a uh, into the furrow of a plum now generally here uh, because uh, the 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 rhizomes the rhizomes you know need uh, what we call humid uh, weather so that's why if uh, generally if uh, the if rains are not uh, received in time generally uh, farmers do what we call if water is there of course they will give light irrigation and generally to retain whatever the moisture that is there in the soil you know to retain that farmer goes for what we call mulching so mulching is a technique mulching is nothing but spreading the dried leaves or the straw your rice straw etc over the field so that uh, uh, the uh, the soil retains its moisture the young fingerlings are not exposed to hot sun so this mulching technique is taken up generally soon after plantation if the rains get delayed 
of course uh, generally um, with an interval of uh, generally 6 to 8 days uh, now generally um, uh, 15 to 20 irrigations during its uh, uh, growth period is needed for uh, good yields now generally important pests you know generally rhizome fly is there and shoot borer shoot borer and root grubs these are some of the uh, these are some of the pests and diseases generally you come across on uh, uh, this and of course soft rot is also another uh, uh, common disease you see on uh, this rhizome generally uh, what we do generally what we do is control measures are generally we go for what we call crop rotation and as i already told you while discussing about uh, the turmeric generally we go for what we call uh, you know seed treatment generally seed will be treated uh, with certain uh, rhizomes mm -hmm. agalol is there and uh, coc is there and uh, of course serasan uh, these are some of the and uh, linde dust, etc uh, they are even sulfur treatment etc are done so that uh, uh, you can prevent uh, if any um, seed is already infested with either diseases or uh, these uh, grubs etc pests or diseases now harvesting very similar to that uh, generally uh, it comes for harvest you know a little bit early when compared to uh, turmeric because here generally the turmeric, the ginger, you know, generally it will be sold in fresh, fresh form only, unlike your turmeric. Turmeric generally in fresh forms, generally market is very, very little fresh. But here, 90% uh, of the uh, this uh, ginger, you know, it will be used in fresh form only, undried, fresh form. Now, if it is, it, it's get dried also, you know, that can be sold uh, in the market, of course, in the form of dry um, ginger. Now, generally, harvest generally uh, begins in the month of uh, December and it gets continued up to January, February or so. And generally, um, either by using plough or peacocks, etc., uh, the rhizomes will be dug up. And uh, generally, the average will be yield will be some 10,000 to 15,000 kg per hectare. Now, generally, um, before bringing it to the market, generally that will be cleaned, and of course uh, uh, the seed material, the soil material, and uh, the um, you know uh, dried uh, um, leaves and uh, roots, etc. If they are there, they are they are removed either by using sharp uh, scalpel or by using uh, what we call uh, bamboo sticks, etc. You can clean the unwanted material, soil material, other leafy material that is present on the uh, rhizomes of uh, the ginger. Of course, uh, here also in some areas, the curing will be done. And generally in curing, generally the scraping, uh, already told you bamboo, with bamboo sticks or sharpened uh, uh, knives, scalpels, etc. are used. And uh, generally, uh, uh, before uh, sending them, to the market, you know, generally uh, they, they are cleaned because uh, the um, uh, the um, roots and uh, the scaly leaves and the soil material, if it is there, uh, it fetches you less price. But of course, uh, for preservation of the fresh one, you know, generally it is a common practice, you see, uh, generally the soil, the mud or the soil will be applied on that so that you can preserve it for longer duration and when you want to use it you know generally you clean it thoroughly then uh, you can put it in uh, your uh, what we call mixy and you can use that uh, in the form of paste now this is uh, a common practice and uh, uh, no it is not an exaggeration you see uh, your uh, um, your um, non veg preparations without uh, your ginger will be tasteless so for all uh, uh, spicy foods uh, generally, it is an important uh, um, constraint for the preparation of uh, all spicy foods, especially your uh, non-veg preparations. Of course, in vegetable preparation, of course, even in okwa making, even in sambar, for all uh, um, you know 
cook in all cookings generally we use this um, you know ginger either directly or indirectly of course i already told you this ginger tea is very famous then we move to what we call coriander coriander the coriander is nothing but you know coriander setaivum uh, ambelliferae or otherwise apiaceae apiaceae or ambelliferae is the family coriander coriander setaivum and this coriander you know it, it is used in two you know in two forms of course primarily it is used in the form of what we call seed seed and of course uh, the fresh leaves fresh leaves of coriander what we call dania is very popular in all preparation all in the kitchen you know uh, it is not an exaggeration no cooking without what we call uh, this uh, dania green dania leaves in all preparation generally we use even after preparation also even for uh, you know for attra uh, giving uh, an extra attraction for uh, the preparation generally the game mint leaves or your coriander leaves and etc or spread over the your preparations now you know generally uh, this coriander uh, is mainly grown in russia turkey palestine morocco also but of course in almost all the states of uh, india this is grown and uh, in uh, united andhra pradesh uh, roughly 1 lakh hectares the uh, where this coriander is taken up and uh, here in ap you know generally karnool anandapur guntur prakasham and maida kadilabad rangareddy are the areas where uh, this is grown now unlike your uh, turmeric uh, your ginger this is a, a rabi crop but of course nowadays nowadays uh, if you want to grow it for seeds you know generally you you take it up in the month of or in the rabi in the rabi crop second crop but this this is nowadays varieties are available this is being grown you know especially for leaves greeny leaves it is cultivated throughout uh, year throughout the year and uh, generally uh, if it is for seed generally as a rabi crop now generally uh, moisture retaining block clay soils are quite ideal for raising this crop and now land preparation of course uh, this also requires uh, you know a fine tilt of the soil is there generally two three um, you know plowings are taken then by using uh, blade harrow etc it will be leveled and generally that is seed drilling generally you know because uh, um, you know heavy drilling will be there or uh, heavy heavy seed is being used because um, this can be thinned at regular intervals thinning means you you pluck it and uh, send it to the market as a greeny leaf now whatever that remains you know till the end you get uh, your seed so that's why heavy seed rate is being used in uh, uh, coriander coriander cultivation heavy seed uh, rate is being used now generally uh, it requires you know 15 uh, 15 to 18 kg uh, seed is required generally seed drillers are generally used and the spacing uh, between the row and row will be around uh, 30 cm and uh, generally seed you know if you you might have seen seed you have uh, two parts splitting you get two splits and you know even the seed you know uh, the cartilage like uh, material that will be added uh, uh, to your soap that will be taken up along with the soap also the seed material so seed germinates in about um, um, 12 to 15 days after sowing and generally as i already told you thinning is done uh, at regular intervals and that uh, uh, green parts will be sent and uh, when it comes for flowering you know when it flowers you know that loses its uh, uh, marketing as uh, a green leaf so that will be kept and of course it come flowers and fruiting takes place and at the end you get your seed now harvesting comes you know after 45 to 20 days um, it comes for flowering before that generally after sowing in 30 35 days generally it will be sent for 
thinning will be taken it will be plucked and sent for market if you if it remains in the field for uh, more than 60 days you know then it comes flowering and uh, uh, harvesting uh, seed harvesting see done after the uh, 100 to 130 days of sowing and uh, generally after um, generally harvesting will be done by plucking or by using sickles you can cut it and uh, generally you keep that you know um, plants along with the seeds in uh, sun for two or three days then it dries up and generally you thrash it because very easy to uh, separate them from the stalks of uh, the coriander and uh, these seeds you know after super, uh, after harvesting generally they will be winnowed and uh, um, chaff etc unwanted material will be separated and that will not be kept under sunshine for long so if you keep it under sunshine it, it becomes it, it it gets what we call it becomes yellow or straw color that will not give you good price now it should have you know um, with the green green and yellow um, that gives you good price by sending it to market and of course we have uh, even here also we have a coriander effid will be there and uh, stem uh, galls of coriander etc are there uh, you can check them you know by using uh, clean and healthy seeds and uh, maintaining what we call field sanitation and going for you know crop rotation you can check uh, the uh, pests and diseases that are very common on coriander Uh, now this is about uh, uh, three things. Uh, so we learned today about uh, turmeric. We learned about ginger. We also learned about the coriander. Now uh, this with this uh, we will be concluding uh, today's lecture and uh, in the next um, lecture on uh, you know on Saturday and Sunday we have uh, uh, this coming Saturday and Sunday and again on the next. Uh, coming Saturday and Sunday, of course, it will be uh, uh, it will be 19th and 20th and we have and uh, 28th and 26th and 27th, uh, we have another uh, four classes left over and we will complete, you know, whatever uh, the, you know, portion we have left because of uh, the previous schedule. Now, in the next class, we'll try to learn about, uh, learn uh, the you know, fruits, especially uh, we left what we call, we did not discuss about uh, the sweet lemon, oranges, batai, orange, batai, lemon, we did not discuss. And in next class, we'll try to cover them. So uh, with this, I'll conclude. If you have any doubt, um, you can raise a query. If not, uh, let us, I'll call it a day and see you next week on Saturday uh, at 2.30, okay?